Hello, everyone. The Rules, Confirmations, and Public Elections Committee will now come to order. Today is Thursday, January the 3rd, 2019. I detect a quorum, and our first agenda item will be elections, and why aren't we doing why? Why are we doing Arts Commission? Elections and confirmations for Art com Arts Commission. And I have three people, and I would like to call them. Oh, we only have two chairs. You can put them out here. Let's get up. Oh, guess what? Now we have three chairs, so all three of you can come up together. That's the reason they advise me. Ah! <laughs> so, <laughs> um, so our first is reappointment of Jane Alvis for the term expiring Ju January the 1st, 2023. Then I have the appointment of Mr. William Cheek the third for term expiring January the 1st, 2023. And then I have the appointment of Miss Ms. and I'm gonna say this wrong, please forgive me, um, Marta. Powell, how close Matia. was that? Matia. Matia. Matia Powell for the term expiring January the 1st, 2023. May I have all three of you come up, please? I mispronounced her name for years, and she never told me, so. Matia. <laughs> yeah. She'll be nice about it. I have She won't hold it against you. But that's rude. You should get it right. Excuse me. All right, I am going to... Um, First, I uh, have questions, uh, three little questions for you all. Then I'm going to open it up for my committee, who may also have some questions for you. Um, are you are you a resident of uh, Davidson County? Yes. Are you a voter in Davidson County? Yes. Do you belong to any other metro boards or commissions? No. Are you a resident of Davidson County? Yes, ma'am. Are you a voter in Davidson County? Yes, ma'am. Do you belong to any more metro commissions or boards? No, ma'am. Are you a resident, Matia? Are you a resident <laughs> of Davidson County? Yes. Are you a voter in Davidson County? Yes. Do you belong to any more metro, any other metro commissions or boards? No. Well, I would like to offer, um, open it up now um, for any of my council members to have questions, and Ms. Murphy. So I'm fortunate enough to know all three of you and think very highly of you and excited because I think this is a good fit for both of you. Obviously, you've done a great job on this committee. Um, unfortunately, I'm going to pick on you a little bit, Jane. Okay. Um, I think it was last committee meeting or the meeting before, I went on a little bit of a soapbox about how when we send resolutions to the legislature about how we feel as a council that we need to be communicating with our lobbyists and our city lobbyists. And so meet Jane. Jane represents cities and has represented cities for a long time and is a great resource for all of us at the legislature. And so I wanted to just kind of put those two together because, you know, might get calls from us. But um, it's, you know, that's the, con the conversation that I was talking about last time. That's a conversation that we should have another time mm -hmm. with Jane and others like her so she can help us understand the atmosphere up there and how we can best communicate with up the hill. So I wholeheartedly support everybody and want us all to support them. So thank you. Anyone else? Yes. Uh, my question, Jane, you have been uh, in this committee commission for a long time, yes. and I really appreciate you know what you have uh, accomplished you know past uh, decade. And my uh, biggest. Uh, accomplishment I am so happy about is the witness wall mm -hmm. sitting in here and I think Nashville as a leader of you know civil rights movement we should embrace those kind of you know culture and arts more so do you have any other plan to reflect Nashville as a, as we present you know going forward well we'd like to think all the works of art do in some way you know we have all the flood the flood um, there are seven different flood projects that are in the neighborhoods that were most deeply affected by the flood. I think that's an example of that. Um, what you mentioned, witness walls, is one we're very proud of. I think um, that one was one that just had tremendous amount of community input and support, and um, 
we, we loved that whole process. It was, it was a really good, thorough one. Um, going forward, we've got several community centers, all of which have have community input. The artists are doing, asking for community input before they do their design. Sometimes we ask for their design first, but lately, several of the projects we've been doing, we've been asking them, we choose an artist and then have them go to the community. The Herb Williams one out in, um, it's not King Ridge, out in Antioch. The Cloud. Smith Springs. Smith Springs, thank you. Um, that one was one where he went to the community to decide how it would work. And so I feel like that, in that way, Nashville gets reflected. Mm -hmm. That's great. Any thought or comments on the how, you know, our community can uh, represent Nashville as a diverse city? Um, so I've been on the Arts Commission before, and I think public art in particular is one way where the public can connect with the history of Nashville and the people of Nashville, and it can reflect a lot of different cultures that are in Nashville. So I, I'm a strong believer that we need to reach out and make sure that we're touching, with public art, that we're touching different cultures within Nashville. I think it's really important. I think it really, one of the things that art should do is, it should make people think, inspire them to think, and one of the things that's easy for us to think about is each other as people in Nashville. So I'm, strong, I'm a big believer in that. Thank you. If I could go back and just brag a little bit more, another thing, the Thrive Program, I think you all know about the Thrive mm -hmm. Program, that one's really meant to be a neighborhood-based art project where the artists, neighborhood artists are paid, it's all local artists that have to interact with the community and they create a, a so again, that's another one that's here. Yeah, I think this is a great fit for, yeah. you know, you have been uh, participating other boards and commissions. So how do you feel about getting into this as commission? Uh, I'm very excited. I think um, one of the things that I'm, I'm, I'm passionate about serving, so I appreciate having the opportunity to serve on another commission. I feel like when I serve, I try to give 100%. Um, and I've made, uh, I've served on um, community ed, and I still to keep in contact with them. I served on NECAD, and I actually connected NECAD and community ed, so now community ed, and NECAD actually offer classes through community ed. So, you know, I don't just leave, I try to keep those connections and really figure out how we can all, how I can use those to continue to work together with other commissions and FARC boards and, and, um, uh, and committees. Um, and, you know, I, in my day job, I work um, with Alignment Nashville and connect with a lot of nonprofits, a lot of community members, and I hope to bring just my connections to this commission and be able to really make sure that we, when we do this art, um, particularly around communities, that we're getting that <coughs> input from the communities. It reflects what they need out of an art piece. Um, I do think art is very important. Um, I think it's important to not just um, reflect beauty, but also reflect um, the community that it, that it um, serves. Yes. I just want to make a comment, <clears throat> and it's the comment I've made probably the last seven years when it comes to the Art Commission, even with the former executive director, is that um, what we see out in the community a lot of time is a lot of the physical art that you see, like the, the sculptures and statues, they typically are surrounded in the core of the city. And as communities out in the suburbs, we still have a lot of districts that do not have any art. And um, I serve one of those areas. They're going to say that there's art there, but just like the flood wall art, it's, it's on the top of the Antioch Community Center that's barely visible. There's nothing to denote it for people to see it um, um, versus the interactive art that you can touch, you can feel, kids can play on, and they can see those are landmark type art pieces mm -hmm. uh, that we do not have. We do have the, the Thrive grants where they can come and the kids can paint some things and take it with them. But for the most part, the art, even with the community centers, is up in the ceiling. It's nothing, it's not, uh, it's, it's, it's not interactive. And one of the things people have really expressed an interest in, you know, when you go downtown and you see the sticks mm -hmm. and Ghost Ballet and some of the other uh, large pieces, communities would like to have art pieces like that. And um, and we've not, we've counted, if you look at your map, which she brings every year and where it's <laughs> outlined, it's all outlined right here. But when you look at how we fund art, and I know that we have not said that, you know, we use capital projects and uh, the, the, the 2% whatever we, we put a dollar amount above that whatever percentage of the capital project we put uh, one percent or whatever the amount into an art fund so we've seen for example when when that bill and legislation they decided to do this um, and we talked about this extensively the decision was made that you know 
it would hopefully fund projects in those areas. And when you take, for example, Cambridge High School, they never to this date have gotten their piece of art that they were promised to go with the school. So they have a space out there, but no art there. And um, those dollars, when we look at you know school projects, capital projects, that monies were used to fund these projects, they've been put downtown. And what we've been given out in a lot of the communities is that, oh, we're supporting <coughs> Thrive Grants, and people in your community can apply for these grants, but you know it, it's not the same, and it's not really equitable. And um, there are people that exist outside the core of the city that need to see art, and it's not necessarily children in a classroom painting. Um, it's you know creating landmarks and creating uh, spaces for placemaking. And so I would hope and, and I've hoped for the last seven years, but I would um, impress upon you all that as you go and start exploring that we created a road map of some type of plan to extend art beyond, when I say art, like a ghost ballet, a, a big piece of art, beyond the core of the city, not hanging on the wall, but some interactive pieces that we look at our schools and go back to the model where we're putting a piece of art in with our schools, where those vacant spaces have been reserved for art and there's nothing there. Um, so uh, those things, and, um, and I just appreciate you all agreeing to serve. Well, Thank you. Yeah, and I can say one of the things I really admire from visiting other cities is seeing some of the some of the smaller community art projects. One of my favorites is there's a neighborhood in Seattle, and the, the local people in the neighborhood helped inspire it. It's a giant bridge that ends underneath a business area. It was sort of an eyesore, and so someone came up with the idea: let's have a giant troll eating a Volkswagen. And it was a $25,000 public art project, and it becomes a destination in the community. It took an eyesore and turned it into something that was interactive. Mm -hmm. I completely understand what you're talking about. We really need to inspire those kinds of ideas out in, out in the community. Absolutely, and even going as far as you know, uh, creating uh, funding within your own budget to fund those types of projects uh, within the communities, I think would be helpful. We, we can always make more progress in that regard. We have made a lot of progress in that mm -hmm. regard, I feel like. Um, the community centers, libraries all over the city, but we can always do more and are looking to do more. So I appreciate your thoughts. Mm -hmm. And one last item, I'm sorry to monopolize, but the other thing I would like for you to also look in is coming up with a plan for, um, we have a lot of people building in our communities now, a lot of development, and a lot of them express interest in donating art to the city. Mm -hmm. And there's a whole issue about establishing a policy about receiving art from private donors, because we have some developers that want to put some art in some of their spaces, but they want it to donate it to the city and there's a whole issue about maintenance and easements and all of that but I would like for us as a board of art to look at how we can come up with a policy for accepting those types of donations. Thank you. Lady Hayward. I'm good. Gee. Anybody Move for else? Approval. Second. Um, it has been moved and uh, on uh, Miss Elvis because I think we need to take them one Elvis. at a time. Yeah, okay. And seconded for the reappointment for the term expiring um, January the 1st, 2023. All of those for, please say aye. Aye. Any against, please say the same sign. All right, it is unanimous. Congratulations. Thank you so very much. And then I'll move the next two together if they have the same date. So they do have the same date. They do have the same date. Second. All those for? Aye. Aye. Any against? All right. It is unanimous. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Generous. Yay! I'd like to just make one comment. You all really reflect the genre that you are embracing. I mean, the artsy. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> and with you, I, I relegated to your boots. Uh, you like them. You make the <laughs> Thank you. Our next appointment is for the um, Board of Health, and it is for an appointment of Miss um, Tanae Hamilton Franklin for the term expiring uh, July the 9th, 2019. Miss um, Franklin, would you come up, please? I have a couple of questions. Good no, evening. I have three of them. How are you, dear? I'm nervous, but I'm Why? good. You're good. Yeah. All right. 
Um, are you a resident here in Davidson County? Yes, I am. Are you a registered voter here in Davidson County? Yes, I am. Do you belong on any other Metro Councils or boards? No, I do not. All right. Well, I am now going to open it. And there's no need of being nervous to my other um, members in case they have any questions for you. <coughs> Uh, I have a question. Your your place of business is in Boston? Yes. Uh, Health Leads USA is a healthcare, national healthcare nonprofit. The headquarters are in Boston, but I work remotely from home. Okay. So, for instance, I'll probably travel about once or twice a month now, but um, my physical space that I work from is on a computer in front of Web WebEx. So, That's wonderful. Yes. Her resume looked awesome. Move to approve. Yeah. Well, I'll just make a comment about her. Okay. <laughs> just because I was just going to say that um, I was excited to see your name. And uh, for those of you who do not know Tanae, Tanae is uh, uh, very involved in the healthcare arena in the community. And I think you will be a wonderful asset to this board. We grew up in Chattanooga together, and so Chattanooga people are the best people. They're doing, <laughs> you know, they're doing a lot in Nashville, so it's making Nashville so great. <laughs> motion on the floor and I, I had a, a strike second. against her if she no. her. and I had a second. <laughs> All right. Any other um, discussion? Good. All those in favor? Aye. Any against? Same side? There is unanimous. Thank you Thank so very you. much. Con Thank congratulations. Oh, that's true. <laughs> Next I have the historic um, historic zoning commission and we are looking at Lee Fitz for the term expiring June the 1st, 2022nd. May I have Ms. Fitz, Fitz to come up, please? How are you doing today? I'm doing well. Great. Are you a resident of Davidson County? Yes. Are you a registered voter in Davidson County? Do you belong to any other commissions or boards of Metro? No. Oh, great. Well, I'm going to open it up now, and some of my other members may have some questions or comments for you. No, okay. Well, I've got one. I know this board has some, is this the board that has some criteria of, of people who, let's see, Tim, maybe, Mike, can you, well, doesn't this board have some criteria of, like, who, of the people who sit on it? Is she checking any boxes that we should know about other than just a being person? It's an open position. Okay. It's an open. Okay. I know, like, some have to live in overlay kind of thing, so I'm just going to have you talk about that, but I don't know about that, honestly. Okay. It's an open at large. And I think you also, Councilman. Yeah, this, uh, I'm, this is a question. Um, is, is there any way that things that come before the commission um, that you would have uh, um, conflict of interest from your work? So that was one of the questions on the form. And so I do work for an architecture firm, and we have, you know, presented um, cases before um, the commission. So, in those instances, I'll, I'll learn more through um, Tim Walker. I know he wasn't able to be here tonight. He was sick and was supposed to be here and wasn't able to be here. But, um, so in instances where, you know, if, if it would be someone, if my firm would be presenting a case, I would imagine that I would recuse myself from those situations. Yeah, we, we usually um, ask for people to confirm that um, if there's anything that comes before the commission that they or their firms have an interest in, that they that they would promise to recuse yeah. themselves. And it sounds like that's not a problem for you. No, I would imagine I would. That's what I would imagine would be the case. Okay. Of course. Yes. Great. Any other questions? Did I hear a motion? Motion, motion. to approve. In a second. It has been moved and seconded uh, the appointment of Ms. Fitz for the term expiring June the 1st, 2022 on the Historic Zoning Commission. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed, please same sign. It is unanimous. Congratulations. Free parking, too. <laughs> <laughs> Next, we have the Solid Waste Region Board, and I am going to ask the two, um, the appointment of Mrs. Damika Beck-Taylor for the term expiring December the 15th, 2024, to come up, and also the reappointment of Mr., um, okay, they didn't have to tell me how to do this one, Robert Deal. Deal mm -hmm. for term expiring uh, December 31st, 2024. And I beg your pardon for saying that okay. correctly. Okay. So, um, Ms. Beck Taylor, 
How are you doing today? Well, thank you. Great. I, I have the same three questions for you. Are you a, resi a resident of Davidson County? Yes. Are you a registered voter here in Davidson County? Yes. Do you belong on any other metro boards or commissions? No. Okay. Mr. Deal? Yes. Are you a resident of Davidson County? Yes, I am. Are you a registered voter here in Davidson County? Yes. Do you belong on any other metro boards or commissions? No. Well, for the two of you, I'd like to open it up, and some of my council folks may have some questions or remarks for you. Yes. Um, first, I have a question to Mr. Deal, and I think we are going to the, uh, you know, updating the uh, policy for how we as a city tackle, you know, the we are waste. In, yes, the process of uh, formulating a new um, solid waste plan for Metro. Um, it is going to be multifaceted and very long, uh, long reaching into the future. The ultimate goal is to uh, achieve uh, zero waste, mm -hmm. so, uh, and that we would not landfill anything. Mm -hmm. um, it's very ambitious, um, but the what we've seen so far from the uh, from the developers of the plan has been uh, uh, very positive, and uh, we're excited about it. So on that plan, are you considering including uh, some school? Because metro school, public school system, is a kind of one of a large waste producer. Mm -hmm. So if we can educate and incorporate uh, some plan to reduce, uh, you know, one of the uh, producer of the waste to kind of encourage and uh, participate uh, mm -hmm. Rest reducing program. Uh, schools uh, will be play a vital role in in that you know the education process is so important to changing people's or uh, you know influencing people to uh, to do more recycling and more uh, composting of their waste. Uh, you know, I, I've always been of the uh, of the opinion that uh, that children can drive this process in a household. Not only that, but the, uh, especially with the composting process, um, schools can um, uh, be kind of serve as pilot programs, so that uh, so that food waste can be um, uh, uh, composted and, and uh, used for you know um, uh, good down the road. I, mean, I didn't put that well. <laughs> Uh, question to Ms. Taylor. Uh, this is a very, <coughs> how shall I say, politically correctly, uh, not many people are interested in dealing with the waste. <laughs> is there any specific reason you are uh, interested in, in this specific uh, commission? Yeah, so I've been actually working with Sharon and with the, through the Beautification Commission, they're just starting from neighborhood cleanups within my community. Um, my background's in public health, and I understand the correlation between the, the health of the public and how waste and trash and the ways that we can utilize, not utilize them for good necessarily, but change the way that we process them, manufacture them, reuse them can be beneficial to communities. Um, so it's kind of nerdy and a little gross, but I feel like there's a good connection between the, the well-being in general of the public and how we either recycle or, or, or use trash in a different way and, and how we dispose of that as well. Thank you. I appreciate it. Move for approval. Second. second. It has been moved in approval and, and seconded. Any other discussion? I would just like to make one comment. I love nerdy and gross. They have to have nerdy and gross. <laughs> Here to serve. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Okay. All right, it's moved and been seconded. Um, all those in favor of the appointment of Ms. Beck Taylor for the term expiring uh, December the 15th, 2024, please say aye. Aye. Any against? Okay, well, congratulations. It was unanimous. Thank you. Now for the reappointment of Mr. Deal for the term expiring December the 31st, 2024. You might want to wait. This is it. excited. Yes. Second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Yay, congratulations to both of you. Thank you so now very you much for party. your serving. I'm slacking on my job tonight. I appreciate it. Okay, next we have
Storm Water Management Committee, the reappointment of Granet and um, Adams Taylor for the term expiring February the 8th, 2023. How are you doing today? How are you? I am fine, thank you. Um, I have three questions for you. Um, same three I've been asking all night. Are you a resident here of Davidson County? I am. Are you a registered voter here in Davidson County? Yes. Do you belong on any other metro commissions or boards? I do not. Okay, well, I'd like to open it up now. Some of my um, council people may have questions or comments for you. Please, anybody? Yes, Councilman Johnson. Hi. Um, as a stormwater management, I think uh, you are uh, a committee deal with uh, stormwater runoff or how to prevent and so forth. And I think the biggest problem we as a neighborhood is facing is uh, effect of the infill development. Because especially uh, in uh, my side, of West uh, Nashville side, West Mid, Hillwood, uh, what they are happening over there is uh, buy small ranch house and turn into a gigantic, you know, house. Uh, by doing so, increasing, you know, impervious surface and uh, therefore uh, more runoff to the next door. And not only that, you know, when it has a bigger uh, impact, uh, development people are a very, um, conscientious about how to catch French drain and how to increase those. However, the problem is during the construction. When it's done and, you know, all the French drain and all the uh, rain garden is in place, indeed, it may uh, capture first one inch of the water. However, in, during the construction, it, sometimes six months, uh, eight months, uh, nine months, you know, over a year, uh, the neighbors have to endure those runoff water or mud and so forth. So my question to you is, as a stormwater management committee, do you think you can kind of uh, take a look at a requirement for those uh, infill developer to uh, more rigid containing those stormwater during the construction? Yes, I think the, com the committee has relies heavily on the team mm -hmm. and uh, we have probably the best I've seen in, in, in um, Nashville this this team as far as being vigilant mm -hmm. um, and when construction comes along or the construction projects come to them of sending inspectors out and, and our goal is to support their recommendations um, and the committee has individuals on it not just including myself but those individuals who are experts between between our engineers and architects and, and then individuals who are just part of the stormwater committee in general, the community, who bring these things to light to the board. Um, so the, the focus is on, as we see Nashville continuously grow, how can we start at the beginning, and that is right. construction. And I think the team has, has done a good job and will continue their laying out manuals and plans of uh, kind of just really engaging with the, the contractors at the initial phase to ensure that those problems don't occur as the construction starts. As you said, it, when a person gets in and they're responsible, the mm -hmm. owners are responsible, that's one thing, but really when a constructor's there, they're here, come in and out. Right, right. And the goal now is just starting at the initial phase yes. and, and kind of working with them mm -hmm. to ensure that you know they are able to capture any type of that runoff. I know, you know, like a grading permit a division, they do have a great process. However, it seems like, you know, neighborhood infill part, they do have not, you know, specific uh, provision or rigid as, uh, as a grading permit process. Mm -hmm. So if we can shift uh, the infill to as, you know, strict as grading permit so a neighborhood doesn't ha have to have mud and run for water and trash during the construction. So if we can shift that, that would be great because we don't necessarily want to regulate, you know, propose the legislation right. to do that. Right. So. And that's something that will definitely bring back to the yep. committee as a concern. I appreciate it. Council Lady Haywood. Uh, I would, this is a reappointment, correct? Cool. And I was just uh, wondering how we, I know this area is of great concern. This is my first term on the council. And we, oh my God, this area of stormwater gets so much attention. So what could we do to make you all's job easier? Or is it anything you can think of? 
top of my head and just being supportive um, you know again Nashville is growing rapidly yeah, and people want to live here and they but they want to live in the beautiful areas they want to live near the Cumberland and they forget about you know we have this is what we're bringing out to our next generation. So mm -hmm. just putting in policies in place to there are strict policies as it relates to the runoff that we see as we bring in more mm -hmm. companies and they're building, and they're building, you know, they have different industries that are coming in and as they build, what are, what are the requirements, what is the council requiring that they do from an environmental standpoint? Thank you. Anyone else? Move for approval. Second. It's been moved and seconded for the reappointment of Ms. Adams Taylor for the term on the Storm Management Committee that expires February the 8th, 2023. All of those who approve? Aye. Aye. Any against? Well, it is unanimous. Thank you so very much. Well, thank you. We're serving. Thank you. She, she does check also a box for us, too. She's a community, kind of community at large for the committee. Okay, yay. Cool. Wonderful. Thank you. All right. Like to know Madam Chair. Yes. Mr. Hamilton has an update with respect to Dina Turner, who was on the solid waste uh, nominations. So she yes. had a death of a friend and is unable to be here tonight. So I think the committee, if we could move up one meeting. I'll move to defer to the 15th. Uh, second. 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 Mm -hmm. Oh, Ms. Turner. Mm -hmm. the 15th. Thank you so much for the information. Um, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Affirm it. Yes. Uh, any against? Now we will move on to resolutions. Um, the first resolution. Um, do I pass this to you? Um, the first resolution refers to uh, public elections. Okay. Approve the election of certain notary, notary publics for Davidson County. And the sponsor of this, which is 2019-1542, is none other than Council Lady Lee. I'd like to, if I can move my own, move approval. Second. Any, anybody? Second. Anybody against? All in Aye. favor of? Aye. Aye. We got it. Thank you so very much. Hands. The next... Seven. The next resolution is resolution RS201019-1543, which recognizes uh, Representative Sherry Jones for her many contributions to the city of Nashville and the state of Tennessee as a member of the Tennessee General Assembly. Um, and if I may, uh, for the purpose of bringing this forth, if I may have a motion, please. So moved. Second. It has been moved and seconded. And the um, I'll handle it. Um, so as you know, we as we presented to Speaker Harwell, was it mm -hmm. just last meeting? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It seems like it was a year ago. Ha <laughs> ha, <laughs> little joke. Um, <laughs> so this is, as you know, Representative Sherry Jones is also uh, retiring from the state legislature, and I felt it was more fitting and proper that uh, Representative Potts uh, carry this legislation rather than me as women's chair. So. Um, mm -hmm. I'm co-sponsoring, and I hope that you all sign on, mm -hmm. and I'll let him do the scheduling and the all that jazz. I move that we approve it. It has been moved and seconded for the approval. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any against? It has been passed. Unanimously. The next resolution is Resolution RS 2019-1544 by Councilman um, Dowell, and it refers to the request for um, Government House Haslam's grant clemency to, and I'm going to say her name Centoria. wrong, Centonia, Centoria. Centoria. Centoria Brown. Move approval. Yeah. Second. It has been moved and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? And it passes unanimously as well. Is there any other business before the council? No, Madam Chair. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. Yes, sir. Vice <laughs> Mayor. Um, so, <clears throat> Mr. Jameson is standing behind me. We are, during this meeting, we are going to, uh, during the council meeting, we're going to talk about how we're going to proceed, uh, proceed with the community oversight board. We obviously have 181 nominations. 
And so we have figured out a way to deal with getting all of them through and heard. As of right now, we have how many questionnaires in? Do you know? Uh, over 100. Over 100 questionnaires have come in. <clears throat> so, um, and usually the last day fills up. So we may have as many as 150, 160 people. Um, and without divulging all of it, we'll tell you at the meeting tonight, we tried to figure out a way to kind of come up with a process so you, not everybody's here for 16 or 17 hours. We get it through in a, in a more efficient process. Uh, the reason I'm here is that um, we think we're going to be able to allow everyone that comes in 10 minutes to talk to um, the committees that they're going to come in, uh, come forward to. The question for the rules committee tonight is, do you, want, do you want them to come in and address specific questions to you, or do you want them to spend the 10 minutes kind of telling you why they want to be on the, on the uh, oversight board? I thought we well, just we we decided it already. Both. Yeah. Well, so I know you talked about three questions, right? That right? was for five minutes. But that was uh, for five minutes. Plus, I think those three questions, I believe, are primarily on um, the form that they're going to turn in. So I think we are coming back one more time. What we want to be able to do is um, we're going to send out this information to all the nominees as well. Uh, because there are so many people coming through, you want them to know exactly what they're going to, what their role is when they come in. If you want to ask them the three questions, that's fine. If you want them to address the three questions, and already we, they should already know what they're going to be when they come in. The or, I'm sorry, the conversation I think when we had it before, because that conversation, that point was brought up. But the conversation was, when you write something down is one thing, but when you actually have somebody talk about it and right. answer it, you can hear the passion or the lack of or whatever. So I think that's why we still wanted that those questions asked them. So I'm going to put out something else to the committee too, because you said um, if we just wanted to do that or have them talk. Or maybe we can do both if we ask them that, and then we have some more time um, than to have them just just talk. I don't want us to get bottled down in, okay, if we want to give them specific questions, now we've got to sit here another whole day and to figure out what questions we want to give to them, since we already came up with those three. I think we could ask those specific questions that we talked about and the rest of the time we can do what we always do just ask them random questions that we may be interested in based on maybe the way they answered the prior questions we it could kind of just be impromptu uh, and uh, i think all that is fine i think the idea is because you you may have let's say that every one of these individuals turns in a questionnaire that's 180 people that are coming through. And if they're coming through in 10-minute segments, um, you have to be ready to go because, you know, it's, it's fine to talk to people and kind of get them comfortable and so forth. But by the time you look up, you only got five minutes left. And obviously, this is one of the more important things that we've done this term. So we want to make sure that we, we have the process right. And um, I think the idea is that everybody should be answering at least the same specific question. So if you want to stick with the three, that's fine. If you want to go ahead and tell them what the three questions are, that's fine. If you want to stray from that, I'm giving you kind of one last opportunity to say, I'm depending on this committee to kind of tell me how you want to proceed. You let me know, and we're going to let them know, the, the nominees, as they come through. Councilman Mendez. Um, first of all, I totally agree with you that like we put a, a lot, a fair amount of energy into coming up with questions and reasons why, and so I'm, I, I mean, I've got open mind, but I would stick with that. Um, the only thing that I'm hearing a little bit said a little bit differently is I'm not anticipating that we're going to ask questions. I'm anticipating that they're going to be advised in your time. Make sure to answer these three questions. Um, and then the 10 minutes is, is theirs to present what they want to present. And um, uh, hopefully they hit the questions. Um, uh, and if they've got time to address something else that they want to, you know, they can, that's great. Um, so, but I'm not anticipating that we're going to ask questions the way we do in this setting. But maybe I'm wrong about that. Did anyone say that it has to be three minutes, I mean, the 10 minutes? 
did we say it has to be? Yeah, it's, it's not said specifically in all the, but in order to get every one of these people through, uh, if you, let's say all 181 people wanted to do it, um, you're going to be here for hours and hours and hours doing it, unless there's some structure to the process. Yeah, She's no, no, what I mean what. is if somebody hits the point, says what they want to say, yeah. and it is like eight minutes or seven minutes, but they have Three said minutes. what they needed to say and we understand all of that, then do we just have them sit there and we say, uh, you have four minutes more, think of something else, no. or do we, <laughs> no. you know well, what, that's, so that's, that's part what of, I guess that's part of the process. So what I'm trying to determine is, and this goes back to what Council Member Mendez said, um, if there are three questions you really want to have them address, we can send the three questions to the individual. Um, so that they know that they're supposed to be addressing those three questions. But if they want to take, an, uh, let's say it takes them five minutes to answer the three questions, if they want to take the other five minutes and explain something else, then that's fine. What you don't, I think, want people to come in is, it's like, now, what do you want to know from me? So we want to be able to tell them up front when they walk in, what should they be doing during those 10 minutes? That's what I'm looking for you all. If you want to ask the questions, fine. If you want me to tell them what the questions are and they're supposed to incorporate it in their presentation, that's fine. If they end up with a few more questions, a few more minutes and somebody has a question, that's fine. But we're trying to get the information so the whole process works clearly. Okay. And maybe I should, Mr. Jamison is behind me. Did I say that correctly? Uh, you, you did. And, and I guess with respect to the question, if you've allotted 10 minutes and somebody's done in six, what do you do? Um, Slade in our office has prepared a, a sign-up sheet that will be sent out electronically by the clerk's office for nominees to liter literally select their 10-minute slot. So if we get off schedule, that's the only problem. Um, I think you would just have downtime if you had someone. Okay, to I'll go to the bathroom. I'm going to say, because I took her time, Ms. Murphy is next, then I have over here and over here, please. So I feel like last meeting, we pretty much had decided it was going to be five minutes. Mm -hmm. We decided on the questions. I thought we were moving forward there. Um, and so I have thought quite, a, I've spent a lot of time thinking about, because I do feel we have a heavier burden being on this committee going into there, we should be well versed on who we're going to vote for and that kind of thing. Because we're on this committee, we'll be hearing from them, all of that kind of stuff. And so I guess what I'm a little concerned about now and going to have to kind of rethink my thought is, is I did feel like five minutes, wow, that's a lot of information when I want to be thorough with this person. One is I really hope that our staff is going to put together their questionnaires in order of the signups. That's one thing that I think is almost mandatory that we have the clerk's office or our staff needs to be able to give us a binder in order of who's coming before us and we're not shuffling around for three minutes while they're talking. Um, and then secondly, uh, last time we got down to five minutes, and I've struggled with this five minutes long enough, came up with, yes, it is, because we're asking thorough questions. We have a very thorough questionnaire. And now we're having 10 minutes. What I am concerned about is, is the fatigue of it. Even though we're rotating and all that kind of stuff, it is a, it is a lot of time for this committee. And I've even thought through as I was talking and warning my employer of the time that I'm going to need for this and resting mentally um, is is just oh, I know that it's it's my role that the Murphy role of having a quorum to take a vote and that kind of thing is is that something that we also want if we're going to go up to 10 minutes and increase double our time basically do we want to consider suspending the rules and giving other council members the opportunity to sit in on some of these interviews I know that's like a whole new can of worms. Um, all right. So, the so 10 minute, how did we get from five minutes to 10 minutes? All right. So here's the process. Since you started asking the questions, I'll just go ahead and tell you what we've decided to do. Okay. So the rules committee is simply the, it has to be vetted through the rules committee. Um, but if you've got 180 people <coughs> coming, even if it's five minutes each, that is 15 hours at a minimum if everybody shows up mm -hmm. to get through that. You're talking about three days. That's five hours each day listening to people come through and talk to you for five minutes. It's almost impossible to do. So uh, what we are doing is we are taking this committee and dividing it into four special subcommittees. Okay? Uh, each of you will be placed uh, on a subcommittee uh, because there's seven, seven members. Uh, Chairman Lee will be by herself. 
she's in charge of one committee, one special committee of the Rules Committee. The other six will be paired together. And then every single council member is going to be placed on one of your special committees. There is no, there's no quorum re requirement for it because you're not voting. You're just listening, okay? So one of you will be a chair and one of you will be a vice chair for a special rules committee. Based upon that, you can get people in faster. You won't hear, be able to hear everybody, but you're going to hear one-fourth of the group. And everything else will be recorded, so if you want to go back and listen to the rest of them, you can do it. Uh, because of that, and because of the request that came up at the last meeting that some people do, you know, work on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, they may not be able to get here. Uh, we are starting at 5.30 and running till 7.30 on the 16th and the 17th, which is a Wednesday and Thursday night. And then we're gonna have an extra day on Saturday from, one, from 11 o'clock to two o'clock? One to four. One to four, sorry. From one to four, where people who work during the, the week can come in on the afternoon and sign up for that time as well. So I know that all of you may not be able to get to every single one of these things, but we're gonna have enough people in there. All you need is one person to run the meeting. So um, what we're trying to do is take the 15 hours that we were gonna require this committee to do and pare it down to about six hours over a period of time, do it in the evening and on Saturday and do the best we can to have time for everybody to be heard and to have you all not get fatigued. I mean, when you thought about the 15 hours and you have people coming in time after time after time, that allows for no breaks, that's 15 hours straight. So the idea is to bring all council members in and have you vet them by four separate committees. And by doing that, it allowed people to talk for 10 minutes because if you're doing five minutes at a time, people are rushing through stuff and you don't really have a chance to either hear what they have to say or maybe ask a question or two. Does that does that's that help you? That's a better you? explanation. Okay, so we yeah, we should with that part on the floor. Yeah, that's what we're, <laughs> that is that is what we're going to do. We're not going to allow anybody to say anything until I present and say yeah, this is why we're yeah, doing it. Okay. Thank you. Okay. We I had a question over here, and then one over here. I think Kathleen said what I was going to ask about because okay. we spent a considerable amount of time vetting that we're going to ask these three questions and if they have anything else they want to add then they could add to that but I would uh, support us keeping those three questions um, just based upon talking to other cities that had oversight and went through this process that's one of the things that they did to make it consistent and uh, one of the complaints I saw with people once they appointed a board like Charlotte uh, they talked about, you know, uh, the application process, making sure that we had good appointments. And one of the ways we can do that is be transparent about the questions to ask. Everybody get asked the same thing. They have knowledge of it beforehand. And the other recommendation I would make is that we each keep some type of note or scoring sheet um, uh, looking at some of the um, recommendations that the people in the city who wanted to have a community oversight, they spoke about wanting to have, you know, diversity, age, gender and all those types of things on the board, a good representative body of the city to serve that, you know, in some kind of way we're able to track that and keep up with it as we make our decisions regarding who to appoint, looking at the criteria they right. talked about who they like to see. Councilman um, Johnson, I believe you were next. Yes, uh, it, it was covered. The way I envision is if each person comes in, you know, how, utilize 10 minutes. During the 10 minutes, uh, the, it is expected to answer three basic questions. And then if they want to add whatever the rest, you know, remaining the minute address. But however, just to be fair to each applicant, we don't ask in additional different questions. That was my understanding. But, okay. So that's, that's fine, I know, council member. But I just wanted to make sure, so what we would take the three questions, if everybody's okay, those three and questions. send them that, that, so you don't have to ask the questions. Mm -hmm. They are supposed to come in and be, and as soon as they start, they introduce themselves mm -hmm. and they say, I understand what the three questions are. I'm going to start answering. Everybody's not going to say that. You know, yeah. some you'll have to bring it up, but at least yeah. they yeah. want to know and be ready. ready. Blah blah blah. Yeah. You know, so, um, and yeah. at this, oh, I'm sorry, Councilman Mendez. Um, I guess I just wanted to. I'm trying to imagine the way this is going, especially if we end up end up having our colleagues who haven't had the benefit of these couple conversations. Somebody's going to want to ask a question at some point to somebody, um, and. 
I guess I'm asking, is it our intention to run these meetings so when the clock hits 10 minutes, if they're mid-sentence, mid-answering somebody, mid-anything, like that's it? Or um, if they're engaged with a particular council member on a back and forth, that we're going to let it go until that's wrapped up? I would think that you would, if you were the chairperson, have a conversation before the others come in, have a conversation with the other council people that are doing it with you so you can get that understanding and make that clear on how you're going to do that. I'm sorry. I agree. I, I think that's fine. Uh, so um, I don't have the list in front of me of, of who in here is chairing. I think uh, I, I think uh, Council Member Roten is chairing one. You've got one because you have no choice because you're the only one. Uh, Council Lady Haywood is going to chair one, and right. Council Member Johnson, I think, is going to chair one. So everybody else is going to be a vice chair. All right. So what that means is that if the chair doesn't show up, you're the chair. All right. So everybody probably will be chairing somewhere along the way. Uh, and but you all can decide. You run your own subcommittee, but you. As long as you abide by the same concept, which is when people come in, get their name, you know, look at, have already looked over their sheets in case there's an issue you need to vet. Because one of the things we'll be looking for is, you know, there are certain parameters that say you cannot serve if you hit these certain qualifications. So be prepared with the numbers that are coming in. You've already looked at the application, but when they come in and introduce themselves, I think your role is to go ahead and let them start answering the three questions. So, uh, Vice Mayor, when will you get all of that information to us as to who's on our team, the dates and the times so everybody uh, You're going to get them in about 30 minutes. Thank you. Okay, it's done. Uh, we're going to pass it out and we're going to go over it in the full council because the full council is also engaged in this. That's right. Yeah. right. So, so but fun. as a committee, we have already gotten the dates and the times, correct? What was the Saturday time? It's the 16th, 17th, and 19th. On Saturday, the 19th, it's 1 to 4. And on the other days, it's 530 to 7.30. And when we have already pre-scheduled conflicts, who do we tell? Um, so I think what you would do is um, part of your responsibility as the vice chair of your committee, or acting chair if you need to be, is to make sure that someone, a council member from, you're going to have like about eight people on your to team. To make sure Kevin can be there if I have to leave early. Yeah, if you're on, I forget which team I put you on. Yeah. Well, but whoever is your chair, make sure that if you're going to be gone, that the chair is there. Yeah, yeah. Or if the chair is not going to be there, the vice chair is going. Or if none of the both of you can't be there, you need to make sure that a council member who is serving on your special committee is there to run the meeting and follows the same process. Gotcha. So, excuse me, but with it being now 6:22, and probably a lot of this is going to come up again as you talk in there. So, um, this is not something we have to make a motion on or do. It was just a piece of information for us. So, as of right now, if there's no other information before um, this committee, um, I would like to adjourn. Wait, 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 what's up? Oh. You do have a rule, a draft rule, there's no action required on it. It is a proposed change to Rule 28. It's a three-tenth amendment. It'll be before you formally on the 15th. Okay, so it's not in. Oh, okay. For the next meeting. All right, so what did I need to do with it? That's it. Uh, that's it. Just make sure it is the course. All right. Then, um, did I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. All right. Thank you so very much. <laughs>